welcome, welcome, welcome to all beautiful people of God. Welcome to your lovely program, Revival of Truth. Yes, this is what we need to change our world. Revival of Truth. Jesus said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Truly speaking, nothing is as gracious as truth. In fact, the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 20, 23 says, Buy the truth and sell it not. Welcome. My name is Augustine Odi. I am the pastor of the Deeper Life Bible Church in Jamaica, and I'm the president of the Deeper Life School of Evangelism. Our offices are located at number 4C Norwich Avenue, Kingston 11. And the phone number to reach us is 876-923-1040 or 876-631-7108. And the WhatsApp number to reach us, 876-829-9798. And you may want to also reach us through the email. The email is deeperlifejamaica at yahoo. Dot com. Of course, especially for those who are listening for the first time, you will want to visit our website. The website is www.deeperlifeschoolofevangelism.org. And when you get there, you'll be able to visit the website and see what and what we are doing. And I know you want to be a partner with this ministry. This ministry is given to two very important things to tell you. One, holiness of life. Two, evangelism as our passion. And so at the website, you will see two little buttons there. One is donate. Donate either in US dollar or donate in Jamaican dollar. And we want you to support what we are doing. We are spreading the gospel across this, our island of Jamaica. We believe that what we need in Jamaica is the spiritual SOE. Yeah, the political SOE is okay, where you have the soldier, the policemen, and the politicians in control, capture the people, conquer them, and commit them to prison for doing evil. But we, the born-again Christian, we believe that the SOE, State of Evangelism, is needed right now. And we are asking everyone across this island that has, that has known Jesus Christ to register to be part of the free SOE, School of Evangelism, so that we can carry out the mandate of SOE, State of Evangelism. What does that mean? Everyone will go out and reach out to every person within their environs so that souls can be saved. Yeah, and by so doing, we can turn this nation over to God. Don't forget that righteousness is what exalts a nation. And the only institution, only mechanism for righteousness is evangelism. That's why the Bible says, He that winneth souls is wise. And only those who are wise in using the word of God will win souls. Welcome one more time. My friend, don't forget that we are still taking registration for those who are interested in being in our Bible school. And I want to encourage you, if you are truly a born-again believer, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. You need to study. You need to study so that you are not deceived by false prophets or the magicians around you. And so come to Bible school. You know, at our Bible school, at the Deeper Life School of Evangelism, you come to classes only once a week. Only once a week. We, you know, the curriculum is so designed so that you can still do your office work, uh, do your homework. You can still go to church. So you come to classes only once a week. So we have classes for Kingston. We have classes on Wednesday morning, Wednesday evening, and Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon. So you can be part of it if you are within St. Catherine, St. Thomas, and Linstead, or 
Old Harbor, wherever you are, all those in Kingston, St. Andrew, your campus is at number 4C Norwich Avenue. And those of you who are in Hanover, uh, St. James as a whole, your school will at uh, Montego Bay. And you may call the number to reach the pastor who is in charge there. And his number is 792-6055. If you are in St. Elizabeth, you reach out to our pastor over there. Um, the school is at Santa Cruz. Um, his number is 385-6452. And if you are in Clarendon, and you want to be part of our Bible school over there, the number to call is 447-2513. If you are somewhere in St. Anne, St. Mary, Portland, your campus is at Ochorios. So you call the number 540-9769. 540-9769. And those of you at uh, Westmoreland, we have the school at Manning School in Savlama, but you can call the number 801-4713 or 447-2513. And for those in Trelawney, the school is based at Falmouth, the capital. Call the number 836-6386. Okay, or you may also call 792-6055. And where have I not mentioned now is Mandeville. For those in Mandeville, Manchester, and all the environs, call the number 355-1359. Wow. Brethren, it's a wonderful thing to be in at a Bible school, you know. When you come to Bible school, you get younger. Let me also say for those of you that, you know, you have the desire to make contribution to this ministry, we will highly appreciate it. Honestly speaking, you know, it's so expensive to be on radio, on television, Instagram. You know, the world is moving fast, very fast, growing fast. But the word of God is not moving at the same rate. And so we, the minister of God, we will be guilty if we do not devise a way to catch up with the people who are running with the systems of the world, that's why if you are so blessed of God, support the ministry of this nature. Our primary goal is to go after souls, to reach people, to turn them around from darkness into light, uh, to turn them around from evil unto righteousness. So, send some money to us. You can make some transfer to our bank account. Our account is at CIBC, First Caribbean Bank, Halfway Tree. The name is Deeper Life Bible Church. Is a checking account. Our account number is 1000-364-364. 264. Again, Deeper Life Bible Church as beneficiary, account number 1000-364-264, halfway tree, First Caribbean Bank. And those of you who may want to use Western Union, use my name to send it down and then send information to us. I collect it and give it to the church because it's not personal money. It is the money giving to the body of Christ to advance the kingdom. Let me also remind you, friend, for the SOE, we are inviting you to be part of our Bible Readers Club. But that's where we are going to launch the SOE, a State of Evangelism. And the State of Evangelism can only be effective when participants will attend school of evangelism. Let me say, the school of evangelism for state of evangelism to save our soul, SOS, is free of cost. You don't have to go to any of our campuses. It's something we train you through the Zoom. 
And when we train you, then you train other people around you. Pastors from all the parishes in Jamaica, let us come to work together and do exploit for God. And our nation will be better off. Young people get converted and come out of drug and gun. Adults be delivered from, from all kinds of the entanglement of the enemy. I am very, very positive that we can change this nation with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The next thing is to listen to our Bible reading in our mother's tongue. I love it. You should love it too. Okay? Uh, because that is the language that will reach the people down, down the communities. We're going to pray now. After prayer, we listen to the Bible reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, if you have your King James Bible, follow through. If you don't have, just listen attentively and enjoy it. Let's pray. Almighty God, we so thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for the penetration of the gospel in Jamaica. We thank you for the freedom we have. The freedom you have given us to carry the Bible, to pray the Bible, to preach the Bible, to evangelize. We know there are some nations that some people can't even carry the Bible publicly. But we thank you that we have governments that fear God. Thank you. We have Governor General, the Prime Minister, and the Cabinet Member, the Senators, the Opposition Leader, and the, and the Shadow Cabinet. They are people that fear God, and they will not make any legislation that will impede the Word of God. They will not make any legislation that will restrict the preaching of the Gospel. Father, therefore, we pray you protect our leaders that your fear will continue to be in them and any one of those leaders in the house of parliament that becomes so egoistic, refusing to bow to the gospel, Father, uproot them from that place. Uproot them. We want a nation that fear God, a nation that can be turned over to God like Nineveh, where one day the governor general, the prime minister, the opposition leader, and all those in the political order, the senators, the senate presidents, all of them will say, we want to have a day of fasting and prayer across the whole nation. Everything locked down. Even the animals, no food for three days. Prayer and fasting and reading of the word. Hey, this country will just turn around. Criminal will have nowhere to hide but to bow to this gospel of righteousness. Father, heal our land. Heal our land. As you did for the Ninevites, not as it happened to them in Sodom and Gomorrah, but what you did in Nineveh so that the nation as a whole turned around to seek God. Do it. Do it, mighty God, to glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stay tuned for the Bible reading. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, my brother and sister, me want to help you remember the message about Jesus Christ. Where me did preach to you. And that said message the way you keep in our heart. And where everything we want to believe be expand. And that message here where we save you, if you hold on to it and keep it in our heart. But if you tap believe, the believer who used to believe in a Christ had it for nothing. Because me tell you the most important part of the message seem like how God tell me. Me tell you say, Jesus Christ come and dead for we and save we from we sin them. Just like how God would did say him would have do it. Me tell you say them bury him and when three days pass, him come back alive. Just like how God would say him would have come back. And when him come back alive, him go and make Sifa see him. And then him twelve followers of them see him. After that, all of five hundred of we brother and sister them see him one time too. Some of them brother and sister they dead, but most of them still alive. After them people they see him, him go show himself to James. 
And after James, he make the whole of him apostle them see him. Me are the last somebody to see him. And he make me see him even though me come in like somebody were born the wrong time. Cause the rest of apostle them better than me. Me not good enough for them even call me one apostle. Cause me used to make God people suffer bad bad. And me all did kill off some of them. But a true God good and kind to me make me can do what me I do now. And all way him do for me and nothing for nothing. Me work harder than all of the other apostles them. But me never do it for my own. God help me for do it. Cause him good and kind to me. So it no matter if a me or a them did preach. All of we preach the same sitting. And all of we believe the same sitting. Now if we have preached say Christ Jesus come back alive. How some of you can have said that nobody can come back alive? But if nobody can come back alive, then Christ Jesus couldn't come back alive neither. And if Jesus Christ never come back alive, then we are preached for nothing. And what you believe no not make no sense. And no what nothing neither. And if I choose say nobody can come back alive after them dead, then we are tell life and God too. When we tell people say it make Jesus Christ come back alive. Because if nobody can come back alive, then God never make Jesus come back alive neither. If Christ Jesus never come back alive, then why don't you believe now no use? And you never get saved neither. God still have a punish you for your sin. What's the people them we believe in Jesus Christ and we dead already? Them gone for good. God have punished them for them sin. So if we can only trust Christ Jesus for save we in other life yeah, and not the next one, then more than anybody else, a we people should have sorry for. But the truth of that Jesus Christ did come back alive. And he make we know for sure say, God are going to make other people who are dead and who are believing in him come back alive too. Because just like how people dead seek a what one man did do, a same so people are going to come back alive seek a what one another man did do. People are dead seek a what Adam did do. But people who are believing in God are going to come back alive seek a what Jesus Christ did do. But everybody now go come back alive same time. Everybody have them one at time. God make Jesus Christ come back alive first. And when Jesus Christ come back again, the people who believe in him and we're dead, them are going to come back alive too. And the world are going done when Jesus give Father God him kingdom. But Jesus now will give God the kingdom till him take control over all of the wicked spirit them and take away them power. So that them can't do nothing again. Cause Jesus have to rule over the kingdom. Till him put the whole of him enemy them under him foot. And the last enemy where him go get rid of a death. Cause in a God what it say. Him put everything under him foot. Him rule over everything. But when them say everything. Them not talk about God too. A God make Jesus rule over everything. And put him enemy them under him foot. And when God make him boy picnic rule over everything, he may go rule over him boy picnic. That way there, God will rule over everything. Now what about the people them we go get baptized for the people them were dead and never get be baptized before them dead? If nobody can come back alive, what am I get baptized for? And if we can come back alive when we're dead, what make we a teach God word and a put with life in a serious trouble every day? Me brother and sister, Every day me put myself in a serious trouble. Me can't dead any time. Me can't say them something yeah? just like how me can boast and say good sitting about you know. Cause you know believe in a God enough enough. And you know and Jesus close close. If nobody can come back alive. What good it do me? If me fight with the people them right here so in a Ephesus. Where fight me like say them a wild animal. If nobody can come back alive. Make we nyam and drink. Because tomorrow we might have dead. No make them fool you know. If you keep friends with wicked people, then we cause you to turn away from where you know right and make you do wicked sitting too. You know, if you wake up, take control of yourself and tap sin. You know, should have shame. Because some of you know, no know God at all. But some of you know, go ask. How dead people are going to come back alive? What kind of body them are going to have? You know a fool. When you are plant seed, it no have to dead and dry out first before you can plant it. And while you plant, I know so it a go look when it grow. You plant so so seed, maybe one wheat grain 
or some other kind of seed. But when it grow, it no look same way. But God make everything look the way him want if he look. He make all the different, different seed them look and shape different from them one another. Because everything can look and shape same way. Animal body different from man body. Bird body different from fish body. The sitting them where they are heaven have one kind of body. And the sitting them where they are on earth have one nether kind of body. Them body different, but the two of them pretty in a them own way. The sun bright, the moon bright, and even the star them bright. But the three of them not bright same way. Even when you look upon the star them one, all of the star them not bright same way. As so it a go go when God making people were dead come back alive. The body where we have now, it can dead. And when we dead and them bury we, it a go rotten. But when God make we come back alive, the body where we a go get, now go can dead. It now go rotten. When your body dead and bury, it ugly, bad, bad. And it weak. But when God make it come back alive, it a go well pretty and trang trang. When your body bury, it make up a bone and blood. But when God make it come back alive, it a go be one spirit. Same like how you have one body where make up a bone and blood, a same so you have one body where a spirit. It all right down in a God word say. The first man Adam, God did afi make him. God did afi give him life. But the last Adam, he might go be one spirit where can give people life. The spirit body never come first. And the body we make out of flesh and blood come first. After the body there, then the spirit body come. The first man, God take dot make fiend body. But the second man, fiend body come from heaven. The people who live on earth, they are like the man where body make from dot. And them we live in a heaven, them are going to be like the man we come from heaven. And just like how we did have one body like the man we make out of dot, as same so one day, we are going to have one body like the man we come from heaven. My brother and sister, this is what I try to say to you. Nothing we make up a bone and blood can take part in a God kingdom. And sitting where dead can live forever at the same time. And that make the body where we have now, and not the body we are going to have when God make we come back alive. Listen, and listen good. Because I go tell you no sitting where nobody no know about. I know all of we are go dead, but God are going to change the whole away. And we are going to change fast too. Before you can quench your yite happen. When them blow the last hand, God will make the dead people them come back alive. And the body where he go give them, now go can dead again. And he go change the whole away. Because the body them where we have now, we dead and rotten. And so we have to change them and get one body where can dead. The sitting them we can dead have to go change and turn in a sitting we can dead. And when that happen, at them time that the sitting them we right down in a God word, I go happen to. Me I talk about the part we say. Death lose, it now no power over we. Oh, if you say you win in death, at which part your power there? Sin I get death the power for earth people, and sin get feed power from the law. But thank God, because I am sent with Lord Jesus Christ so that we could have win and that death could have lose. My brother and sister, turn up trang and not make, not make you tap believe. Make sure so you don't ever do the Lord work. Since you don't know so all we do for God, you don't know do for nothing. Welcome back, my friend, from the Bible reading. We give thanks to God. I have no doubts that you truly enjoy the Bible reading, especially as we are being told that the physical death is not the end of our journey. Always remind yourself that there are two kinds of death and there are two kinds of life. There is the physical death and there is eternal death, which is eternal separation from the Almighty God. And all those who get into the second death, they will suffer perpetually in hellfire with the devil. 
but there's also there's the physical life and there's eternal life that's why Jesus said I have come to give them life he said I am the way I am the truth I am life eternal so choose life my friend I know you will make a good choice so that you will be blessed abundantly and I want to encourage you to make sure that you choose life and not death my friend we're going back to our teaching on the subject that I thought I have totally ended and that is happy new you last week I spoke to you about the last letter in the acronym of happy which speak which about why but I'm gonna be honest that I did not exhaust the material after that presentation I felt compelled in my spirit to come back to you and throw more light on the subject and what is it is about the will of man and the will of God and the will of the devil you heard me right the will of God the will of man and the will of the devil let's go back to the place that we read last week which is Romans chapter 6 reading from verse 12 it says let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof neither yield ye your members as instrument of unrighteousness unto sin but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of unrighteous uh, of righteousness unto God for sin shall not have dominion over you for ye are not under the law but under grace what then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace God forbid listen very well know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants ye are to whom ye obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness but God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you being then made free from sin ye became the servants of righteousness verse 20 for when ye were the servants of sin ye were free from righteousness take note of that what fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed for the end of those things is death verse 22 but now being made free from sin and became the servants of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What are we learning here? As I said from the beginning, we are looking at that word, why? which is the last letter in the acronym of HAPPY. And I said Y means yield ye yourself. Yield ye yourself as we have it. And as I said, if you look from that verse 12, how many times the word yield yourself showed up? In verse 13, he said, Neither yield ye your members of instrument of unrighteousness, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead 
and your members as instrument of righteousness unto God. If you turn over, you see it again in verse 16. It says, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. If you move down further again in verse 19, it says, I speak after the manner of men because of your infirmity, of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and unto iniquity, unto iniquity, hmm? even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness, unto holiness. You can see how many times the word yield. You will remember last week I sang a song from the hymn book that say, Yield not to temptation for yielding a sin. There's another song that is similar. You will enjoy it. Oh, brother, life journey beginning with courage and firmness arise. Look well to the cause thou art chosen. Be earnest, be watchful and wise. Remember to pass her before thee, and both thy attention invites, but one leadeth unto destruction, the other to joy and delight. O oh, brother, yield not to the tempter, no matter what others may do. Stand firm in the strength of the master. Be loyal, be faithful and true. A trial will make you the stronger. If you, in the name of the Lord, fight manfully under your leader, obeying the voice of his word. O oh, brother, the Savior is calling. Beware of the danger of sin. Resist not the voice of the Spirit that whispers so gently within. God calls you to enter His service, to live for Him here day by day, and share by and by in the glory that never shall vanish away. God help you to follow his banner and serve him wherever you go. And when you are tempted, my brother, God give you the grace to say no. God help you to follow his banner and serve him wherever you go. And when you are tempted, my brother, God give you the grace to say no. I encourage you, search for that song, either in your redemption hymnal also. And those of you who are members of the Deeper Life Bible Church or Deeper Life School of Evangelism, it is hymn number 246, titled, O Brother, Life's Journey Beginning. The message here is very simple that you will be tempted, you'll be tested, you'll be tried, you'll be tried. But don't forget that Jesus is our leader. So you can be triumphant. Jesus was tempted in all points, but did not commit sin. You and I can be tempted also in all points, and we can resist the tempter because our master, was triumphant, so we can also be triumphant. Welcome. Now, having read that, what are we going to focus very quickly? Number one, we want to look at the will of God in contrast to the will of man. We want to see also what is the will of the devil in contrast to the will of man. For us to understand this better, 
you see that God has his own will. There is the prerogative will of God. But there's also the permissive will of God and the permissive will of man. But there's the will of Satan, which I will also show you. If you go, if you read further in this book of Romans that I've just finished reading, in chapter 7, listen to what the Apostle Paul said before he became an apostle. He recognized the fact that he was under the bondage of sin. Now, this account, some people misinterpret it and then they misconstrue it in the sense that saying, you know, you see, Paul is an apostle, but he was still living in sin. Paul said he couldn't manage it. That's not true. What is written here, there were accounts of what happened to Paul when he was Saul, yet to be converted. Listen to what he says in Romans chapter 7, reading from verse 15. He said, For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I will do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. How can we summarize all of this? Paul said, before I became a born again believer, before I met Jesus on the road of Damascus, before the light shone on me and knocked me down and I became blind for three days, this was my experience. I want to do good but I discover that I have no power to do the good that I will. You know, to will was there, but the power to do it was not there. So the, the issue we are dealing with is how can we do the will of God? We are all familiar with the Lord's Prayer. Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 6, our Father, which art which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done here on earth, even as it's being done in heaven. That is what God expects us to do, to do his will. But no man can do the will of God without the kingdom of God being established in the heart of that individual. Think about it again. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Then thy will then be done here. My friend, if the kingdom of God has not come into you, you cannot do the will of God. You might desire to do it. There are some people who think they can just, be, uh, they can just try to be religious. Several times you hear people say, I am trying to be a Christian. You don't have to try. All you need to do is to surrender your life 
to God and ask God to forgive you of your sin and ask God to allow the Holy Spirit to take over your inner man and transform it. God will forgive you through faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost will take over your spirit and renew it. And then you will, be, you will have the grace of God to do his will. You cannot do the will of God without the grace of God. You cannot do the will of God without the kingdom of God coming into you. You can see the connection. When Jesus said, eh, except you are born again before you see the kingdom of God, except you are born again before you enter into the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Romans chapter 14, verse 17 says, The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but the kingdom of God, number one, is righteousness, peace with God, and the joy of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So my friend, several times, it is not your will to continue in sin. It is not your will to be rebellious. I say, it is not your will to be wicked to your husband and be wicked to your wife. It is not your will to steal your employer's money. It is not your will to be rebellious to your teachers and to speak evil of your neighbor. But there is the power of sin inside. Many people do not know how the devil has taken over their lives. You know, people do things, <laughs> listening to news, just these two weeks, very frightening news, especially when you hear someone abroad and in the land. When you hear someone who could kill his wife or girlfriend or baby mother and put in a bag, and took it somewhere in the bush and put oil there and burn it down. Huh? Burn human being and then also go back to check it up whether it is well burnt to make sure and take hammer to beat up the bones. You know, when you hear those kind of things, you'll be wondering, do you mean that man was acting in his right mind, with sound mind? No. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So we are saying, therefore, that for you to do the will of God, for you to be obedient to God and enjoy the promises of God, you must bend your will to conform to the will of God. Let me show you what the devil does. Why we need to be careful. Jesus described the devil in this way. In John chapter 10 verse 10. He said, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Look at it in John chapter 10 from verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come eh, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So, what is the will of the devil? Which many people do not know. Many people in our island of Jamaica, let me say all over the world, but which focus on my own island where I live, we see that people, they have bought into the will of the devil. But you can make a decision this day and say, no man, I am not going to allow the devil to take over my will because listen to me, every one of us, God gave us the power of will. But the devil is always subverting, is always intruding is always wanting to take over. But remember, God said in Genesis chapter 1, when he gave man power, you will see it in verse 
28, when the Bible says God made man in his own image, after his own likeness, and God now said, be fruitful, multiply, subdue, and have dominion. We are given power to have dominion. And the devil stole away that initial power through Adam. But Jesus Christ came and restored to us that which the devil stole away. I told you before, Jesus said, the thief, the devil, cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and then to destroy. But he came to die on the cross that we may have life. So it will be your choice to say, yes, man, I want life and I want abundant life. It is when you embrace the life of God through faith in Jesus Christ that you have the grace to rebuke Satan. Is there in the Bible, James chapter 4, you see it very clear from verse 6 that God gives a grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. He now said in verse 7 in that James chapter 4, he said, submit yourself to God. Full stop. When you submit yourself to God by faith in Christ Jesus, he will give you power to resist the devil, to rebuke the devil. Yes, read it from the Bible. It's right there in James chapter 4, in verse 7, 8. And I'll say, submit yourself, in verse 7, uh, 7, therefore, to God. Then resist the devil, and the devil will flee from you. Don't tell me the devil can't flee. If the devil knows that you have truly submitted yourself to God, he has no option. And when the devil flees away from you, verse 8 now say, draw near unto God and God will draw near unto you. Hallelujah. Listen to me. God has promised us victory in every temptation. But remember, temptation is a universal experience. Whether you are a Christian or not a Christian, you'll be tempted, you'll be tried, eh? you'll be tested to know who you are loyal to. Whether you are loyal and submissive to God or you want to be submissive to the devil, the wicked one, but you make, it, you make a good choice because God has given us the power to choose. He said, choose you this day whom you will serve. That was what Joshua told the children of Israel. When he discovered that the children of Israel, they were vacillating. They were in two opinions. Are we going to serve God or serve the idols? Are we going to serve God or serve Baal? You know that story in 1 King chapter 18 when Elijah stood before 450 prophets of Baal. Many of you know the story. I encourage you to find time, read the 1 King chapter 18. And you see how the 450 prophets failed woefully before one singular prophet of God. Elijah. They failed woefully. And the same thing is before you. If you want to succeed in your relationship with God, if you want to succeed in this new year, if you want to succeed, huh, just simply respond to what Joshua said in Joshua chapter 24. He said, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So my friend, as you listen to me, you need to choose this day whom you want to serve. Oh yes, Paul said, listen to me, I was as bad as any other person. But when I confess my sin and I decide to renounce it, according to the promise of God in Proverbs 28 verse 13, Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. You want to prosper in your business, in your health? You want to prosper 
with your children in, in whatever you are doing in your academics you want to prosper read that proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 he says whosoever covereth his sin and pretend that he is not a sinner you may be going to church you may have the bible but you have not forsaken sin sin is an impediment to your progress i say sin is an obstruction to your claiming of god's protection sin will hinder you succeeding in life that's why the bible say the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life so but why will you come want to continue with sin and be living a life that depreciates god wants you to totally surrender your life to him even if you say you are a backslider why don't you come back to god like the prodigal son he will receive you let me tell you the will of god the will of god for you and for me is that we will do his own will remember if we do the will of god all that god has kept in stock in store for you he will surely give you our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in us are you making up your mind to delight to do the will of god are you will you today enter into covenant with god and say god for me to succeed in life for me to make progress for me to prosper and be healthy for me to be happy this year for me to reach the high dream I have in my heart you have to come in remember what the Bible says in first epistle of John chapter 5 verses 14 and 15 it says this is the assurance we have that when we pray according to the will of God he hears us you must pray in the will of God. If your prayer is outside the will of God, there's no assurance that you are going to have an answer. You know, many persons pray, they don't consider if God ever made a promise in that direction. Yes, I want you to take note of it. You will see it in first epistle of John in chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. It's good you read it. So that you know why your prayer is not answered. In 1 John chapter 5, reading from verses 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in God. That if we ask God anything, anything according to his will. Take note of that. According to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us. Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desired of him. How is it that so many Christians pray and they don't have answer to their prayer? You need to find out. You need to find out. Because James responded. When you open your Bible to the epistle of James, the general epistle of James in chapter 4, he did tell us the reason why many prayers are not answered and yet jesus had earlier promised in matthew chapter 7 verse 7 he said ask seek knock for everyone that asketh receiveth everyone that seeketh findeth and everyone that knocketh the door shall be open but why don't we get the answer we pray and pray and fast and we don't get an answer why Oh yes, the reason is in James chapter 4. Look at it. In James chapter 4, he gives us the answer. Clearly from verse 3. He said, ye ask in prayer and you receive not because you ask amiss. You don't ask God in the will of God. You have to pray according to the will of God. Because it says here, ye ask 
ye receive not because ye ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. So people pray to satisfy the lust of their flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life because he, that was the primary intention in your prayer. And God said, no. It's in the Bible. I'm not making up anything. You see, ye ask and you receive not because you know, it said, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Huh? It said, ye adulterers and adulteresses know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. My friend, I invite you today to enter into a covenant of friendship with God. Withdraw from sinful activity, wicked activities. Withdraw from satanic practice, practices. Withdraw from idolatry, magic, occultism. Withdraw. Withdraw from it. And say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Take over. Guide me. You know what happens? The Holy Ghost will take over even your prayer. And pray according to the will of God. Romans chapter 8. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Thank you for ministering your word to us. Thank you for your unfailing promises. Thank you for what you have done even this blessed day. Thank you for those you are liberating from the powers of darkness. Thank you for those you are restoring back into the Christian faith. Oh Lord, thank you for edifying the believers and developing their faith in you. Oh, thank you for stamping out the powers of darkness upon my listeners. And all those who are in the captivity of the devil, I open the prison door now by faith in the name of Jesus. I open your prison door. Come out. In the name of Jesus, come out of sickness. Come out of the diseases. I say, come out from the depression you are in and come out from the losses and failure and frustration of the devil and be freed. If the sun shall set you free, you are free indeed. The truth you have heard sets you free in the name of Jesus Christ. Be whole, be healed, be saved in Jesus' name. I pray your heart desire will be to please God in heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. My friend, thank you very much for watching and listening. And those of you on the Facebook, make sure you share with other people that they may benefit from this particular teaching. God bless you. Empower yourself for evangelism at the Deeper Life School of Evangelism. We have eight locations across the island. No CXC required, no age limits, and no church discrimination. Register now for the Certificate, Diploma, or Bachelor's Program. For more information, call the Deeper Life School of Evangelism at 876-923-1040 or 876-829-9798. Deeper Life School of Evangelism, your ideal Bible training school. Thank you.